Hello and welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Monsenzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. You ever get that feeling of deja vu? I guess. Like, well, I, I've heard of this before, but... Oh, man, like... Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's odd. Um, joining us today is Jay... Oh, man, first name is Jay. Huh... Jay Foskett. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> hey, J- Jacob, how are you, man? You're joining us. All right, cool. But that yeah. seems different. Hmm. Odd. It feels very odd. But anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review uh, the My Little Pony comic, uh, Friendship is Magic, issue number one. Wait, we, did we do this before? Yeah. It was way back in the before time of the long, long ago. Wasn't this your first first appearance, Silver? Maybe. Wow. Here we are all this time again. Like, what? <laughs> wow. Ten years now? Woof. Okay. Oh, yeah. Over a decade later. Oh, wow. Let's say something, man. Let's say something. But, uh, but honestly, today, we're not going to review that uh review uh issue one we're we're reviewing this specific part in the 20th anniversary re-release sorry the 10th anniversary release uh and that is written by spike uh written by spike is a four page bonus story included with the 10th anniversary edition of the first issue taking place in equestria of the future depicted in the last problem, uh, is it, it re- Spike writing this? I don't know, <laughs> but anyway. under the pseudonym Katie Cook. Oh no! <laughs> um, but anywho, you mean, uh, bef- you mean Jeremy Whitley? Well, first he was first he was Katie Cook, then he was Katie Cook again for the uh, uh, side story. <clears throat> and now he's taking the pseudonym of Jeremy Wheatley. I propose to you that Spike is the greatest master of disguise in Equestria. I hope he doesn't have a turtle outfit. Turtle! <laughs> uh, but anywho, before we head into the review, first impressions are in order. And this will be super quick, guys. Uh, this is one of those things where we've been uh, thinking about doing it uh, to put a cap on Fim. And I, I think this is a good place to kind of put a cap on it. Uh, Silver, what do you think? <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's fun. It's a, it's a fun nod to the comics that they are sort of their own continuity and they don't sync up with the show, but they're still fun stories. Uh, there is the point where I, I feel like the antagonistic pony with the with the untidy shirt and terrible hygiene is a straw man of the critics. I don't know if the defenses are based on real experiences with uh, Jeremy Wheatley has heard, or if he's just pie in the sky hope for his, what his comics accomplished. But either way, I found it a lot of fun. I, I, and it was always nice to see a return of Mina the Dragon. <laughs> uh, looking at her design, I have so many questions. But anywho, uh, Jacob, what about you? Well, funny thing about this one, a few months ago when the reprint was announced, I was sort of pissed because the announcement came up came out about a week after I ordered uh, Volume 1, which contains all the four issues for the Return of Queen Crystal story arc. But after it came out, though, I was glad I did order it because I wasn't aware it was only one issue that got the reprint and not the entire story, so I got lucky there. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that there was this mini story in it though, and I didn't think of it much when uh, I read it the first time. But the more I read it, it sort of started to rub me the wrong way. And well, let's just say that I'm of the opposite thought that still is on this matter. Mm, okay, um, as for me, uh, it's. How, how to put this? Uh, for us, for the ten years that we've been doing this, I've always mentioned that the comic canon is B tier. Whatever is whatever is being said in the comics is canon until proven otherwise. What I 
what irks me is that within the same canon timeline, or sorry, within the same comic series, there's a contradiction between themselves, and you, it, it feels like, huh, why does this happen? Why, 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 why? But you, you can always say that, oh, that's a parallel timeline, that's a parallel universe kind of deal, and it kind of solves itself. And with this one here, I kind of enjoy reading it. Like, haha, uh, the, the critic is uh, going overboard with uh, its canon. How, how did this happen? How did that happen? Oh, blah, 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 blah. How does Transformers play a part in this? It's just Hasbro wanting money. Shut up. <laughs> and yeah, it, it, to me, I feel like this series is a lot of fun and shouldn't be taken too seriously at points. I mean, you can question it, but I feel like you don't take things too seriously. But whatever, whatever. <clears throat> so, um, what have you? Mm-hmm. Uh, before we start, um, if you have not read this comic, pause your and sorry, if you have not read this quick um, comic, pause your and go do so. That was fast. So anyway, uh, we start off the comic wave. Well, um, a retelling of when Spike be- defeated the cockatrice. Which one was this yeah. in Silver? I don't remember. That was the uh, uh, in the first issue, the final story. Basically, it was showing what Spike was doing while uh, main six were out on the adventure to try and stop Queen Chrysalis. Ah, yes. All right. All basically, right. he went. After three days of waiting, he basically went to Celestia and found out that, well, she had troubles of her, and so he helped her uh, save Kent a lot. Ah, I see. All right. Which is nice. It's nice to see Celestia being active with a larger crisis while they, while the main six try to solve their own. Mm-hmm. You know, better than just, oh, Celestia sitting on her throne, waiting for something to happen. No, no, she's a proactive princess. Mm. Oh my god. Them, them. Uh, there, there's more of them soonish when we do that series, but not now. Um, so, this is Spike retelling the story of how she helped Celestia defeat the cockatrice and whatnot. And uh, this was at a book signing and whatnot. So, he's telling and... Uh, telling stories and whatnot, and uh, the presenter or the speaker is just thanking uh, them, thanking Spike for uh, the story and asks what made him want to capture the story in comic book form. And Spike just says, oh, by the way, this is buff Spike. I don't know how to feel about this one. Not a fan. <laughs> uh, but are you kidding? Spike's been, he's been doing crunches. Oh man, he's he's been taking tips from Bok biceps. <laughs> yeah, but anywho, um, uh, he says that ever since he was a little dragon, he loved comic books. So he decided that hey, uh, what better way to portray the story of his friends via comic books? And it seems that there was a question for Spike, and it was. This, this guy the straw pony was it the straw pony yeah um he he, he he's a scholar from the rise and reign of princess twilight sparkle and i'm like wait what uh, am i missing something wait what uh, uh, what what's going on here he's a self self-professed lore keeper to put it in a way. I guess. A Twilight fanboy. Yeah, I mean, Twilight's not going to sm- uh, smile friendly on you with the way you look. And he just complains about uh, the canonization of certain things, about how uh, he tells a story. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to read a snippet here. Uh, it's not just a, uh, the obvious lie that you help so let's fight the uh, fight cockatrice. What's your obsession with Sombra? First, uh, there's a good Sombra who lives in a mirror universe, mirror world. Uh, then it turns out uh, the real Sombra came back. 
and he was redeemed. But then actually, uh, sorry, actual history reports him scheming with Gograr years later. I mean, that, 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 mm, yeah, I, I agree with that one. <laughs> then there's the story about the Kelpie in Equestria who looks like the real Kelpie. Yeah, I mean, those are called plot holes. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and this guy is just pissed off. Like, oh, uh, he, he just mentions the timeline is all over the place. Nothing makes sense. Up is down, down is up. Uh, cat and dogs living together. Anarchy, blah, 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 blah. And Spike here just says, well, the thing is, you see, uh, while writing the story, I had to take certain liberties to make things work. And re writing from my view is very limited. So I had to take a lot of liberties with certain stories, blah, 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 uh, hearing secondhand account and trying to make them work, blah, blah, blah. So that's what uh, the short and simple of what Spike is trying to say to the uh, pony. Also, sometimes he needs to... Uh, Add a little flourish to make the story a little good. You know, just add a little flair here, flair there, make sure comic runs. And uh, there were a lot of ponies that says like, I learned how to read thanks to this comics. I love them. And we see Andy Price says, I wish Sombra could have been redeemed. I like that better than what actually happened. And we see a pony here says, we love you, Spike. Don't listen to him. And in the background, we see, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair. <laughs> you know who they are, Silver? Not a clue. <sighs> Reference over our heads. <clears throat> and when we, when, when, uh, when the day's over, the speaker, Babs, Barbs, her name's Barbs, right, Silver? Wait, the, the, the host? Yeah, Babs. With the, yeah, yeah, her name's Babs. B A B S. Is it Babs gone? God. Maybe. God damn it. Yep. <laughs> yep, Babs. Yep. <clears throat> so Babs just says, uh, thank you for coming, Spike. Uh, that was one of our biggest signings ever. Uh, sorry about the, uh, and Spike just says, sorry about the fuss. Um, and she says, uh, no worries. Like I said, uh, Every even if it's not canon, the comic are still party canon. Yay! And Spike says, oh, "I'm going to remember that. I'm going to use it." So he walks home, and we see that Mina is there. Oh wow! Um, uh, so many questions. But we we see their living place is a history of what happened in the past comics we see the time machine that this got used to travel in time is smaller on the inside uh we see the pony outfit that pinky used to uh, what you call this trick the changelings was it oh well to drive chrysalis insane for the most part yeah mm -hmm. uh, and then we see a, a lot of things uh that hoodie the small hoodie it belongs to a gremlin <laughs> and uh, th there's a lot of history and Mina j uh, sorry um, and Spike just says to Mina uh, there was one of those uh, conspiracy theorists there and Mina just says I mean to be fair half the things that you happen that happened to you don't make any sense and Spike just says I know they don't all make sense but we sure had a lot of fun and ending the comic is and now, a word from two retired sentry residing in Miami. <laughs> Comics, read one today, the end. So, yeah, uh, that's the end of the comic. So, uh, if we're going to cover the interview with Tony Fleece, uh, I'm going to ask somebody else to read it. But for now, I'm going to end this one. Silver, what do you think? Well, I think it's really, it is addressing that there's a canonical conflict between the comics and the show, but that's unavoidable. Unless you had like an exceptionally tight production that knew every facet start to finish. And let's be honest, 
Friendship is Magic was somewhat done on the fly because no one expected it to take off. No one expected nine seasons of this show. So that's both a compliment to it. Now, the guy, I do consider him a straw pony, a straw man argument, but it really does speak to, well, you can either have a laugh at the conflicts of continuity or or canon, or you can be angry. Guess which group is going to have more fun? (laughs) Uh, I, I can already tell. So, you know, I don't mind that the, that the comics don't fit into the show's timeline. They can be their own continuity. They can be funny. Uh, and if it's a good story, I don't care if it's not canon. I just want a good story. Also, I appreciate that Mina is keeping an eye. I don't know how their relationship really is going. But she's the only dragon I know who wears makeup. Also has hair. And hair, yep. How does that even grow? I, I'm just pondering, how how does one dragon have hair? You're going to have to ask for is how different colored hair grows on top of their heads. Uh, no, Not to I mention mean, carpets. Uh, uh, well, maybe she escaped from the G3, my little pony. Wait, G3 pony has hair? Sorry, um, G3 dragons well, have hair? They had a spike in the uh, Princess Promenade and he had hair. Oh yeah, the blue one. You know what? I'm not even going to question it. I've seen crazier shit on online. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, what I want to know is what I want to know is what Spike doing with the uh, pendant from uh, King, Aspen. King Aspen. Was there a great was there a great deer purge of eighteen dickety two? <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Oh, I, I'm just thinking. Most of the collection, he kind of. Uh, send uh, spies to grab it and place a copy of it. Or those could be copies. Who knows, right? <laughs> oh, anything's possible. Hmm. Oh, what was that? But yes, sorry, I, uh, there's. I'll just. Sorry, go ahead. I'll just assume that there was a great deer purge. Mm-hmm. I, I I like that theory, man. That's awesome. <laughs> anyway, um, Jacob, what about you? Well. Uh... Here's the, here's the problem that I have with this. It feels like the comic is taking the piss out of us. And no, I don't mean MBS show specifically. I mean people like you, Norman, Silver, and uh, me, who, who critically examine a piece of media and comment about it. This comic is trying to make Spike look good when faced with the opposition, but when you actually think about it, it makes him look awful. I mean, do you remember any specific... L- uh, any comic specifically where everybody's made to look awful while Spike comes up on top. Uh, yeah, yes, the wings over Yak Yak is there. Yeah, and Pony will day. Okay, no, not Pony will day specifically, but everyone's still made to look bad. Uh, then there's Chaos Theory that makes Celestia look like uh, incompetent. And need I mention Friends Forever number 14 of all things? Mm hmm. Yeah. So you you feeling that Spike is being his own self insert? Well, if, if things uh, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, if things are that up due to Spike's own words that he made things uh, that well he just makes things up. What kind of a friend is he if he makes everybody else look bad on purpose? For the comics or for this one specifically? Well, I guess all actually. Mm. <clears throat> Especially considering what good close friends he is with Denver, and then when it's over, like, yak yak, his thing happens, and I don't know what 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 can I even say on that one. Huh. I don't remember yeah. that comic too well. Basically, uh, dragons at the, uh, main six are visiting yak yak, his then. And then dragons attack, and because apparently, wait, what? What's the leader of the axe again? Uh, King Rutherford. Prince Rutherford. Prince, Prince Rutherford. Yeah, basically, Prince Rutherford gave Pinky the honorary yak title that's supposed to be reserved for one of the dragons, and well, they don't communicate that. And then basically, Spike has to 
uh, well, tell everybody that they're in the wrong for multiple reasons, and then he's the hero in the end. I mean, when you put it that way, it sounds logical, but I guess we need to read it to understand. But yeah, I mean, I mean you can just go back and uh, listen it again. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, but here's the thing. Um, honestly, I don't know about you, Silver, but I, I, I don't feel offended by this, to be honest. Like, there, there's a saying where I'm from. It's if you eat the chili, you feel the spi- you taste the spice, something like that. Uh, same thing goes for uh, if it's hot, get out of the kitchen, something like that. And the saying is if you feel insulted or if you uh, feel like uh, there's a slight uh, there, like there's a slight on you um, sometimes it could just be only you you're, you're the person feeling it and in all honesty this one yeah I, I see people getting pissed off at oh this canon that canon oh, I don't like this I don't like that foam in mouth but in, in the same time too like I'm at a point where okay I understand uh, you want to do a story, and like Silver mentioned, it takes a lot of time to pre-plan everything. And the comic, sorry, the series was a surprising uh, show that came out of nowhere. And the comics were just capitalizing on the success. And the comic was a success too, uh, doing its own thing. And that was a surprise. Granted, not all the beats hit, but it was fun. Well, yeah, that goes without saying. Uh, I don't know. I think it requires saying that it's true. We had fun. It's not canon, but it's fun. Yeah, uh, honestly, like if you really want to uh, pull hair, shout and rage, issue number five to uh, eight was it? Uh, where we have the shadow rarity story arc. Yeah, that's nice good. Yeah, that went nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, they had an idea and they tried to tell it. And the feedback that they got from the fan was negative, if I remember right. Was it more negative? Well, uh, was it more negative than the, the good, the bad, and the ponies? Oh, devil, fuck that one. Whew. Wow. Well, Norman, tell us how you really feel. I sense you're holding back. I, I, I remember not liking it. Like, I, I really hated that one. Like, that one was rage-inducing. Was it me? Rage? Was it? Was nope, it just? Was me? it just you? No, I'm pretty nope, sure. No, wasn't it wasn't just you. <laughs> Basically, the bad guy wasn't defeated because alicorn rules or something you can't use magic to hurt sentient beings even when they're hurting others or whatever yeah and that was frustrating i remember that shit oh god yeah mm. yes, oh yeah um, <laughs> and the uh what was it root of the problem root of the problem is the deer right yeah yep mm-hmm. i mean but more more than that the uh the minotaur Theme park owner who only cares about money. Ah, uh, yes, that one. No, I mean, here, here, here's, here's the overall um, thing. With all the comics that we've reviewed, that we've re- read and whatnot, there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. Some story works, some story doesn't work. Uh, this is just in terms of story. We, didn't, we, have, we don't even really went into the art. Like, some art worked, some art didn't work. I remember there's a whole hoopla about that artist. Um, what was it again? Uh, Jay Foskett. Jay Foskett. Uh, his art style didn't. Uh, people really didn't like it because of the style. Uh, the other one where he copy paste cutie marks. What was it again? Um, who's that, who's that guy? Uh, Celeste. Well, I think that uh, Celeste and Pukipai. No, no, no. Uh, right. Well, there's actually several uh, several artists to that, but I think we were talking about Tony Fleece. Yeah, Tony Fleece. So I mean, oh. there's the thing. Those are the negatives. And here's the thing. For over 10 years now, or however long this comic's running, there's going to be good, there's going to be bad. And this year comic, this short four-page comic, is having a laugh at all of that. 
the good and the bad. Uh, and Spike here says, like, yeah, um, uh, he says, uh, those stories don't always make really good comics. And sometimes those order is off because, well, a lot of things happen to us and sometimes you just need to tell a good story. So, yeah, sometimes you have a... St- and <laughs> how do you put this? Sometimes you have an idea, you want to try and tell it, and something could be a hit, something could be a miss. Uh, their idea of King Sombrero was kind of good. I like the whole Mirror Universe story. I personally like it, but Silver and... <clears throat> James, I remember you guys didn't like it, right? Not as much. The The rules fell, fell apart for me at the end. Jacob, what about you? Did you like that one? Well, honestly, I, it was fine. I, I, I do get the, uh, the complaints that Dimension uh, rules suddenly lose all meaning, considering, well... Uh, if one gets hurt in another mansion, it affects the one and the other. Yeah. Although I, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I the, get, the, but... rule, the, the rule starts to kind of uh, shake a bit when you really get into it. But yeah, the, the overall story I like. And with the redemption arc that Sombra tried to have, that was fun too. That was fun too. Uh, kind of Which pointless. One? Uh, the Fiend Ship is Magic series where. Uh, oh, you mean the the sequel, Siege of the Crystal Empire? Yeah, that one where King Sombrero became good, found her girlfriend, and off they went to find the shards of whatever her name was. Yeah, Princess Amore. Yeah, they're looking for the One Piece. <laughs> yep. By the way, what at what part was Spike obsessed with Sombra? Because I can't remember any of that. No, it was a long time ago, man. You you can clearly tell that Andy Price really loves that. Uh, r- loves no, not Andy Price. Uh, the writers really love using him. And since he was quote unquote a dead character, never to come back, they kind of wanted to use him because he's dead in show canon. So they can use whatever they want with him until they brought him back. <laughs> oh, that yeah. I, for, I couldn't really put, put my finger on it. I really thought for a, se- for a second that Jeremy Whitley saw one one of the commentators on my uh, <laughs> on my f- uh, film fic story that's uh, com- that's always saying that well Spike was robbed of uh, any glory mm-hmm. because he got beat by Sombra. <laughs> I don't know about that one, man. Man, here's the thing. Uh, I follow the logic here. You have a character that's gone, clearly gone, and the comic wants to use them. Hasbro okayed it because, well, we're not going to use him. <laughs> so, I don't see anything wrong. What do you guys think about that yeah. theory? Yeah, and, and I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's fine until the new writers on the show decides to just ignore the whole thing and brought him back just so they can kill him again. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not killed, dispelled. Mm, yes. Dispelled into the ether. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I guess that's about much we can talk about it. Unless anybody wants to add more to it. Well, uh, well, yeah, that's basically all of it. But the main thing that, the, that I'm basically trying to uh, get here, it almost feels like Jeremy is trying to excuse bad writing from real writers by trying to make it a character's fault but we know for the matter of fact that fictional characters aren't true that they don't have any agency beyond what writers make true that, that is true and at the same time too sometimes when you how, how do I put it we got no idea what he's working on we got no idea what pressure he's under when he's doing all of this as the audience at home we one content and we review content and if it's good or bad that's our opinion but for him he could be under a lot of stress by Hasbro by publisher by IDW and so on we got no idea so but at the same time too it's not our job to care because we here want to buy your book and if the book doesn't sorry if the book is not good we will critique it isn't that right Silver? exactly 
basically. Or we'll look for what, what, why it wasn't, why we didn't enjoy it, mm-hmm. and well, talk about how we could fix it. Oh, no, well, sure. we, why well, you guys go full roster of the past in seven years on that one? Honestly speaking, I I love every moment of it, including the bad, the bad and the good, including the infuriating moments. Because if I if I, if I'm not mistaken, back in the day, I was a good boy. <laughs> oh, how times have changed! Yes, uh, until one comic break me. I think the buffalo thing really broke me, right? <laughs> No, there you go. Yep, yep. So, anywho, um, let's wrap it up. <laughs> so, I, I guess we get done final thoughts. So, anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can catch us at uh, sorry, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail dot com. Uh, show Twitter is at the MBS Show, and my Twitter is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can good people find you? Oh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. You can also do a search on YouTube for Weekday Puns or After the Fact Silver Quill, and ye shall find me. Uh, those pages will have links to my Patreon and Kofi, where you can support After the Fact. And I will see folks at Everfree Northwest, August 11th through the 13th. Looking forward to seeing everyone. Awesome, awesome. Jacob, where can good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafontorkar, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in really destroying Thermal Rising, you can find it on fic- uh, filmfiction.net. And uh, if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in a medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go do so, go do so. Uh, if you like to, <clears throat> sorry, if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank you, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also myself, like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Verquil. I'm Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. After 10 years of doing Pony Comics or reviewing the Pony Comics, I am not tired of doing this. I could go for another 10. Depends on how much liquor is available for me. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. We're gonna need a lot of it when we start to go into the next era. Oh, God. There we go.